So that if your monthly budget is like a hundred thousand, have like six hundred thousand somewhere in an emergency fund. And I believe um, that one can really help you. Hello, my lovely people. I hope you are all doing great from wherever you are watching us from. And welcome back to our new segment of where we shall be talking about financial investment and financial related matters. I know you are not using me on these sets. But today I've decided that I, we, I introduced this new segment so that we can be talking about finance. And I'll be having a special guest, a financial advisor, a financial coach. And uh, I'll introduce her to the to onset. And before I introduce the guest, kindly do us a favor. Make sure that you click on the subscription button. We are on a journey towards 10,000 subscribers. Let's make it happen. And at this time, in three, in two, in one, I introduce you to our special guest. And whenever, make sure that every time uh, you see us on this kind of set, kind of make sure that you have a notebook and a pen because we shall be talking about finance and finance needs. You need to take notes. And uh, let her introduce herself. No CEO. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, I'm so delighted to be in this particular channel today and to be able to talk to viewers all over the world. I know you've been doing a very good job with farmers out there. I've seen you in gambots, I've seen you in aprons. Lakini leo nina kuona uko hapa na kitabu na kalamu. Na na nini nimepiga ruka hapa bana CEO bana and if you need this t-shirt kind of I'll post my number below so that you can make another be the CEO of your life and don't give up. So today we are here to talk about how we can be CEOs of our finances. So my name is Caroline Jerry, a personal finance coach, personal finance enthusiast, and I really love talking about money. And this discussion about money, I really love uh, having it with the young people because the young people, when they are starting up life, they are very enthusiastic. Uh, they want to achieve all their dreams, but the how is usually the problem. So where do we start? Even the main purpose of starting this new segment, mm -hmm. I did a research uh, with my age mates. I attend conferences and we talk a lot with people, but people don't know about money. That's why I decided that I introduce a financial coach so that we can be able to start from the basic of about finance. And I guess budgeting is always the key and it is always the first step. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can tell us what is budgeting? Uh, budgeting is basically a tool. We call it a financial tool. And it's a financial tool that should be able to guide you on your incomes versus how you spend the same. And for everyone to be successful or for any organization to be successful, it cannot be successful without a budget. Even in our country, just the other day as we were closing the financial year at the 30th of June, a budget was read to us. And uh, the CS for Finance presented to the nation a budget of which should be able to guide the country and the nation in how to spend uh, its revenues for the next one year. Same case applies to our lives. And I think it is very, very important for us to have a budget. Because how then do you know how much you spend? How then are you able to know uh, where you're going in terms of your goals? How then are you able to know uh, where you'll be in the future? How then will you prevent overspending of your incomes and spending beyond your limit if you don't have a budget? So basically, we cannot really overemphasize the importance of having a budget. And I think it is very important to have it as a culture as an individual culture where you can be able to know that this is the amount of money I'm earning and this is where my money is going. So basically, a budget should be something that every individual should have. So that I can be able to track my expenses, my salary. You have said that you love talking to young people about investment and financial related matters. What, give, what drives you so much that you choose the young people? No. The reason why I, I really feel comfortable talking to the young people about money is because, I mean, even in our curriculum, the same is never taught. No teacher has ever taught 
anyone about money. So the young people uh, tra uh, transit into a working life without really knowing how to manage their money. That is why we are having this conversation today, because we want to change this narrative. We want the young people to be equipped. We want to, them to know what is a budget. We want them to know how do you formulate a budget. We want them to understand the importance of having a, a, a personal budget so that in the end you achieve financial freedom and uh, a, a good retirement. Because the issue about money is a journey. And if you get the inception of the journey wrong, the end will also be wrong. Sure. Talked about starting with the basics of the financial literacy journey. And uh, I know we have started with budgeting. How do I create a budget as a young person? Because sometimes unapata matumizi ni mingi, raha ni mingi. Pesa zetu we are driving the money towards other expenses. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you tips on how to uh, come up with an effective budget. And these are very, very simple tips. And number one is document your income. I know as a young person, you may say, oh, I'm not employed. I don't have regular income. And um, so where is this income that I'm supposed to document, uh, supposed to come from? And I simply say the 100 shilling that you're earning, the 200 shillings, the 1,000, the 10,000, the 20,000, that is your income. Even if it is sales from uh, produce, that is sales. Even if it's uh, the wages from Kaziam Jengo, that truly is also uh, income. So basically, be able to populate or be able to sum up all your incomes. Is it a salary? Write it down. Is it your proceeds from sales? Write it down. Is it your interests from uh, perhaps a treasury bond? Write it down. Is it dividends? Write it down. After you sum up all your incomes, and after you know where you're getting your money from, that is now when you go to the next step. But before we go to the next step, I would want us to think about uh, this particular income. And what do you when you talk about summing up your incomes, is it your gross? Is it your net? And from my experience, I would want us to calculate the same from the gross. And the reason why I say it's from the gross, of course, basically, uh, if you're a salaried employee, you will deduct uh, your health insurance, which is the NHIF. You also deduct your NSSF if uh, you you pay up to the NSSF. And then also you deduct your pensions. But then again, there is the aspect of pay, which you can be able to play around with. Pay as you earn. Pay as you earn. Najwa ile pesa lazima ulipe ujitegeme. So basically, you can be able to play around with the pay. Make sure it reduces. And this is basically in terms of uh, taking up life insurance, which can now in the end uh, result some tax relief. So that is basically one issue where when you, you are tracking your income, so when you're documenting your income, be able to know that that pay is money that you're not getting back. That's money you're paying to the government. But you can still be able to reduce your tax obligation. Pale kwa income. Pale kwa pay by making sure you have a life insurance that can also be part of your savings, which you can later now use uh, later on in life. So basically, you, you document your incomes, and then after you've, you've been able to sum the same up, you now know where you're getting your income from. So step number two is basically tracking your expenditure. Step number two is tracking your expenditure because now you already know your income. So now you need to know where your money goes. It's basically as simple as that. Be able to write down every particular expense, every particular expense you make in a day, be it groceries, be it uh, coffee you bought for a friend. Every particular uh, shilling really matters when it comes to expenses. That gets out of one's kwamfu kwamfu. Absolutely. 
And those receipts that we keep throwing in uh, in the dustbins, especially at the supermarket, you don't uh, make it. It doesn't make it uh, home. So you leave oh, you it mean, at the supermarket. You mean you are supposed to carry that receipt back home? Absolutely, because it helps you to now be able to uh, track your expenditure when you go back home, especially if you spent your money in cash. How then are you going to know that today this is the amount of money that I have spent? So those particular receipts that. Every time you do your shopping and then you throw them in the dustbins. For us, we see them as a waste because to manage Menunua, we have accomplished our business supermarkets in shops. And at times, you also don't want to see them because, again, you are scared to see what, how much money you have spent. <laughs> Maybe I've overspent. Yeah, at times because uh, we also go to to shop without lists. So you are scared to, to look at the figure and the amount of money that you've spent in that day. So basically, it is important to track your spending, be able to know what goes where. So that in the end, uh, you'll be able to know how much are your fixed expenses, how much are your variable expenses, what can you change and what can you not change. Am yeah. I, for, for a minute, am I supposed to keep the, to document the, maybe those receipts monthly, yearly, or it is taking like a specific month that I say, this month I spend this. Now, this because month. we are in the process of making a budget. And mostly, it is usually a, uh, not a very small task, uh, if I may say. Because at times you, you realize that you do it for a day and then you forget the next day. Or you do it for two days and then you forget. Or, or again, um, the habits they are overwhelming you, so you don't want to know how much money you're spending. So along the way, you may be, be unable to keep track. But basically, you're supposed to do this daily, not monthly. To train ourselves. Not annually. To be accountable. Really. Absolutely. Because we say that this is a journey to financial freedom. So you have to make sure that you're keeping track of your daily expenses. So then you don't lose track. Because if you say it's monthly, then at at 30th day of the month, you may forget how what you spent on your first day of the month. And especially on groceries, maybe even fruits at the market. Yeah? Something that you can plant back in the the veranda. Yeah, true. Again, again also, it is very important. Uh, and I, I think this whole business of budgeting and tracking your expenditure can also be made very easy. Uh, through the budgeting spend sheets that we have on our phones. We have apps that can assist you to make it very easy for you to be able to track your expenses. So it's not only uh, writing down on hard paper and uh, with a pen. So if you really don't want to keep a book uh, for tracking your expenses. Creating another library of money. <laughs> Absolutely. You can now uh, have... Uh, a spreadsheet on your phone that assists you now to be able to track your expenditure. And also monitoring. Absolutely. So uh, I believe the next step, uh, after you've known your incomes, you have now been able to track, track your expenditure. And being accountable with your expenditures. Number three is goal setting. I, I love when I talk about goal setting because this helps you to see yourself in the future. And when you talk about goals... Goals are supposed to be specific and time-bound. Uh, analyze or categorize your goals in terms of short-term goals and long-term goals. Short-term is maybe one year to three years. And maybe these are like, for example, like if you want to set up an emergency fund, that can be a short-term goal. For example, you may also want to pay up your debts. Maybe you have so many um, Piling in debts. mobile mobile phone debts, uh, apps. mobile apps debts, absolutely. <laughs> and I know that is something that very many young people are really struggling with. And you can give yourself like a target of like one year. So those are short-term financial goals. So you decide that in the next one year, I'm going to clear away with all these um, debts. In the next three years, I'll have, had, uh, I'll have uh, come up with an emergency fund. And then also, there are the long-term goals. Maybe you want to build a retirement home. Maybe you want um, you want to uh, cater for your children's school fees, who are currently at uh, in uh, in maybe in primary school. But you 
you're making a long-term plan for their university education. Such are the long-term goals. Maybe you also want to plan for your retirement in terms of the savings that you need to really build up along the way. So that you cannot be calling the children or requesting for money. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, in fact, we are veering off from that particular tradition where children take care of their uh, parents. So it is very important that we have these goals set so that you don't even become a bother even to people. Have your emergency fund, Kitty, then also plan uh, for your retirement. Yeah, so the fourth step is um, uh, making a plan. You have already known your incomes. You've tracked your expenditure. Number three, you have your goals set. You already know that these are the goals that I have set. So we are at making the plan. We want to make it happen. So how do you make it happen? In We have a, a rule of the thumb. We call it a rule of the thumb where uh, we categorize um, your income. That 50% of your income should go to the needs. 30% of your income should also go to the wants. Uh, and 20% should go to your savings. And I know you're wondering why I'm talking about the ones, it, uh, especially <laughs> because I'm a, debt, uh, I'm a budget person. I, I, I really love talking about budgets. But it is very, very important for you also to um, have the things that you love. You know, budgeting does not stop you from enjoying life. If you have a budget, then you're constrained. You deprive yourself from the good things that life can give. But what we are saying is 50% goes to you. You're able to pay your rent. You're able to pay your major expenses. Then 30% now goes to your needs, uh, to your, sorry, to your wants. And what are these wants? It could be a vacation. It could be your entertainment allowance. It's something that maybe you, you actually planned your, your, your dates at the Pisa Inn. What was it? If you're a Sherehe person, you're able to budget <laughs> for the same. So that by the time you, 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 you reach that limit, then you stop. Yeah? And then the 20%, of course, now that goes to paying yourself. You know, we have this policy in finance that says that pay yourself first. Make sure that uh, you pay yourself for that day that you will not be working. And I believe you'll have that uh, topic later on uh, as we continue with these discussions. So we are at making the plan. We've already broken down the needs and the wants. We've, We've already broken down. We've already also set aside the money for the savings. So at the fourth... So we've already talked about the fourth. Yeah, the fourth, the plan. Is making the plan. Number five is adjusting. Adjusting your budget. Adjusting your budget. This is where you just check where whether your expenses are really uh, in line with your income. Have you overstepped or have you over budgeted your expenses? And this is where you look at what are these needs and what are these wants? Have I spent beyond my income? Have I spent beyond my income? If I have spent beyond my income, what can I reduce? Can I now go back and look at my needs and my wants? And mostly, we always make a mistake of going back to cutting down on the savings. I mean, if... if So what do you do? Some of us may be tempted to cut on the savings. If your savings was 20%, you want to take it to 10%. And then you want to still provide for the entertainment allowance. The entertainment, obviously, in, in our generation, we can't cut on the entertainment. And now that is where we have to change the narrative. Because what you need to cut down is the money that goes to entertainment. Then also cut down on what, uh, if it is a vacation, then maybe it can wait. It is not necessary. At that moment, it is not necessary. So make sure that you adjust your budget to make sure that you don't overspend uh, your income. And that now makes you, it helps you to align the same. Make sure your savings are intact. 
pay yourself first. Be very selfish with yourself. Ensure that you cater for yourself first before anything else happens. And when it comes to the needs, you may not really be able to cut down on the needs. But could you also maybe look at uh, if your house rent is so high, could you also maybe look at how you can move to a cheaper house? True. It's a conversation you can have with your family if you have. No faking life anymore. Absolutely. Don't live to please others. Look at those. Be very genuine with yourself and look at what is really, really necessary. If you're shopping at the high-end malls, can you start shopping in bulk for the groceries? Can you go to the market on market days? Can you make sure that you, you are able to budget? Can you, as, even as you're going to the supermarket, can you go with a shopping list to make sure that you only pick the most important items? That now goes to the needs. So if we've checked on the ones, we've said that you can uh, minimize them, but make sure you don't touch on the savings. In fact, if anything, you need to grow them. On the savings. Yes. So the last step is reviewing the budget. So uh, you have come this long way. You've known your income. You have known you have known your expenses. You've known where your money goes to. You have your goal already set. You have already made the plan. You have adjusted your budget. Now review it. And from time to time. Uh, Oftentimes, we, we, we see ourselves uh, in times that are really not anticipated. A lot of times, there are also anticipated moments, like now what is happening in our country at the moment. And we are asking ourselves, what really are we going to do? Um, the, the, the costs of living or the cost of living has yeah. seriously sky, skyrocketed. So how do you adjust yourself? How do you adjust your budgets? You go back to the drawing board. Is there money that you can be able to set aside more for the savings? And if that is not even the case, or could be your employer has increased your salary, what do you do? Do you adjust your lifestyle upwards? No. <laughs> that is most, mostly what people do. Oftentimes, we will adjust our lifestyles upwards. If we are only spreading margarine, we would now want to have jam and peanut butter. And honey. Absolutely. But ideally, at that point when you have more income coming in is when you're supposed to go back to your budget where you increase now your income. You readjust your income and then be able to apportion that income. Maybe also channel it to your savings. Yeah? To make sure that your, your lifestyle is maintained at the level it is. And then maybe in future you'll be able to walk a very good journey of uh, retirement and also financial freedom. And I said that you can be able to maintain, like, the, the, this end of COVID that came and hit uh, the nation and worldwide. Yes. And many people are affected. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically, um, you know, those, those, those are times when were really not anticipated because you lose your income. People lost their incomes and uh, uh, some closed shop for several months. And that is where the bit uh, of savings really comes in. Do you have an emergency fund? Have you built those savings to make sure that the emergency fund is really, uh, can really take you for several months? Some of us, uh, if we, we have an issue or we have an emergency, lazima upigia rafiki yako, nikopeshe 2K urgently. And I mean... Okay, in any metafuta with the one man that will attack within the next five minutes. Yeah, and then st people start running away from you. They start cutting you off. And you start saying that you have bad friends that are not there to have. Very true. And I think this is a habit that really the young people should really check. Ensure you have something that uh, you can resort to on a rainy day. Have a budget. Have, have an emergency fund that results to six months of, of your living expenses. So that if your monthly budget is like 100,000, have like 600,000 somewhere in an emergency fund. And I believe um, that one can really help you. You have talked about the how to make a budget. And we have talked about six points. We have discussed six points. And Kunaida Patingine are the mistakes most people make during the budgeting, the making of the budget. Sometimes I guess some of the common mistakes that I know is the discipline. 
Absolutely. I know you, there's other points that, and you, because you have been experienced in this field, you can tell us more about. Yeah. So basically, I, I think I've mentioned some in in as we were having this particular discussion, and one of them is you have a budget already in place, and then you start slashing. You start slashing on the savings, and you allocate that money to the needs and the wants. And I've, I've said that we need to really be selfish. You always pay yourself first. I love what uh, one of the writers of, one of the authors of a book that I've read uh, called Making Sense. She talks about factories and what it really takes uh, for us to feed or to continue feeding some factories, whereas our own factories, we are not really putting a lot of effort in building the same. And then she talks about uh, factories. It's it's where you're uh, putting your money in once instead of paying yourself first. You're building other people's factories. You're continuing to put money in entertainment, whereas you're depriving your own factory, which is your retirement. So basically... That is one mistake that we make. Basically, the other mistake that we make um, when we are preparing a budget is failing to annualize the expenses. And by annualizing, I mean uh, you've already tracked your expenses. You know that in a month, this is the amount of money I spend on this particular category of, of, of uh, expenditure. Like, for example, you know, this is the amount that goes to rent. This is the amount of money that goes to groceries. This is the amount of money that goes to utility bills. And... Um, also in every other three, four months, I also spend this other ma- amount of money in school fees. This is what goes to my uh, car expenses. And when it comes to car expenses, there is your fuel. And then there is also your car insurance. How do you provide for the same in the budget? Maintenance. Absolutely. And I believe that the mystic that we really make is because we are not able to bring in the issue of the annual payments, like uh, like the uh, the car insurance which you do once in a year, or like um, the school fees which you do quarterly. So how do you bring in the same? It, because the moment you leave it out from your budget, by failing to annualize your expenses, then you're creating a risk to yourself where you get distressed or uh, get overwhelmed in one month or the other in terms of your expenditure. So it's very important for you to annualize your expenses and then maybe divide your annual expenses by 12. So if it is school fees, be able to provide for the same every other month. Yeah. You have talked about school fees. I know there's someone, but so there's that money and then maybe he is on a job or she's on a job. Mm-hmm. Just assuming that it is a f- school fees mm-hmm. to avoid uh, from the savings, mm-hmm. then like oh, another if Now, for example, if it's someone who is not yet a parent and uh, you're anticipating that may be a cost in the future, you can put it in your savings so that it grows, so that when the kids come, they, you will not now get overwhelmed uh, when it comes to payment of the same. But if you're a parent, and maybe you have two, three children of whom you pay, like, for example, 200000 per term, what do you do with uh, your school fees? This particular amount of money, you, you've, you've talked about annualizing the same. This amounts to around, uh, let's say, 600000 per per year. So if in a year you spend 600000 how much do you spend per month? That is around 50000 So as you are categorizing your expenses for every month, make sure you're, you're able to set aside or make sure you're able to set aside money uh, for school fees every other month. And maybe you can put that in a money market fund where the same can be growing every other month. So by the time your, uh, your school Thanks. fees liability is due then you can be able to pay the same yeah so basically the other mistake is uh, inconsistency we don't we are not consistent with how like you of even discipline absolutely absolutely you want to keep to maintain your budget and follow it one month and the other month you don't want to follow your budget you overspend this month and then the other month you want to start all over again with a discipline so budgeting really should help you to become very consistent so that every other time you're going to the supermarket, you don't overspend. 
don't spend on things that you really don't need. On the junks. <laughs> Absolutely. They are not necessary. Yeah. So uh, the last mistake that we make is uh, readjusting our, li- our lifestyles upwards. I mean, like when you get an extra income, like when your employer adds you some some salary, what do you do with that extra income? Do you put it in your savings or do you put it under your wants? Exams. And we talked about the 50, 30, 20 rule. Make sure you follow that to the letter. And if need be, increase your 20% of the savings. If you have an extra income, increase the 20%. Because your lifestyle can remain the same. But for you to be able to make sure that your retirement is a good retirement, it's a comfortable retirement, it's a, it's a retirement that is non-dependent on other people, then you have to make sure that your today, your lifestyle today is really well managed. Wow. I've totally enjoyed this session. I have some notes. I hope as you watch this episode, we may, we may take some few notes. And Caroline, I appreciate so much for your time. I don't take it for granted, but from deep down my heart and from the viewers' hearts, I'll not do what I could to let up or some thank you. Mutume, thank you for the comment section. And if there's something that you have not understood, kindly make a Niandikiapo wa comment section in the next session. Iri to resizo maswari before we start. And do us a favor. Make sure, help us to share this video with friends. I know most of the people, most of the Kenyans, not even in Kenya, even worldwide, people don't know about money. If you are asked, what is money? Will you be able to answer? But we are taking the, we, we, are, we started this segment so that we can start a new journey about to gain financial literacy. Support us by subscribing. We are on a journey towards 10,000 subscribers. Na mesema, ini siri. Next week, it is a birthday. Let's us to surprise by clicking the subscription button and sharing this video. Ata ipikia what wengi as possible. Most of the young people, we are still on the young stage. Atuna responsibilities. Let's learn about finance. And let's meet in the next episode. Thank you so much for clicking on our channel.